So we're going to start where we left off, talking about how uh, uh, long short currents help facilitate the formation of the, of, the, of the new coastline. And so as you can see here, you see the formation of this, um, what we call a sand spit. Okay, this right here is a sand spit. And what's happening is that a long short current is picking up sand all the way from this beach and dragging it over here uh, because of that zigzag motion we talked about. So we got that long short current. So you have the water motion somewhere in somewhat in this direction, and you have the breakers forming uh, in a somewhat parallel uh, to the actual shoreline, and then you have the backflow, which is zigzagging the sand, creating the sand here. So you see the the process here in the bottom, and how it actually creates the sand spit, and even creates barrier islands when it deposits the sand not at the shoreline itself, but outside. So you can see how it can create a barrier island out there as well. And it can either it can even close bays, uh, and uh, create inlets, which is like a barely small little um, connection for this bay. So the sand split can get can get so big that it can actually close a bay up and create what is called an inlet that, that separates the bay mostly from the water. Okay, and we call those uh, sand spits a special name. We call them the bay mouth bars. And you can also see how this process creates lagoons, like you can see here. This lagoon is created because the, the, the sandbar pulls a little bit of seawater separate from the, uh, from the actual breaker on the other side of it. And the water is just basically leaking through the side here, but it's not actually coming. From, there's no waves hitting this shoreline. By the way, why are these bays here in the first place? They're here because of differential uh, erosion. Remember that uh, this piece here which I'm about to uh, circulate in yellow is what we could consider a headland or an area that could not erode as fast as the, as the bays did so that the water carved this bay earlier in the formation of, of the shoreline and then also at the same time this sand was made but then later on the sand was picked up and thrown to close the bays with sand spits and, and then make those those structures that we talked about so there you go that's uh, long shore currents forming uh, sand spits, barrier islands, uh, and lagoons, all right? And they also interact with bays as well. Now, another thing that actually forms because of this method is something that we call a tombolo. Now, a tombolo happens when you have, say, a sea island. It's not actually a barrier island, although it could be also a barrier island. But you have an island there already anyways, and that could be either because this, uh, this used to be actually one big outcropping or one big headland, but then, so like something like this, there used to be the ground before, but then the ocean water actually eroded the area in the middle more than eroded the top, so it left an island there instead. So that's where you get the sea island. But then successfully, because of the longshore current carrying this the sand, you actually create a, a, a bridge, a sand bridge, between the continent and the island. That's called a tombolo. So it's actually very interesting how the longshore current can change the shoreline once it's undergone the process we're going to be talking about next. All right. So I started with that because that's where we left off. But remember that this process actually happens at the end of what we're going to talk about next. And I believe that in your lecture guide, I actually put that in the end as it's supposed to be. I just thought it made more sense to talk about it since I just talked about low ocean, uh, long shore currents right now. Now, you see that this process can actually end up eroding the be beach quite severely. And so this will actually pick up sand from the beach and eventually erode the entire beach and take the sand somewhere else. And so look what happened here. Sand from the continent up here was stretched all the way to the bottom which created one large barrier island and consequently a lagoon system in here. Do you recognize this? Well, if you live in Florida and you're one of my students watching this video, you should recognize this as the Miami Beach barrier island system. It's actually created by a, a, this system of picking up the sand from the uh, northern parts of South Florida and stretching that deeper into the water down here, creating the system just like we talked about in the previous slide. Now, if we let this happen continuously, eventually you run out of beach altogether. And so one way to actually stop this process from happening is create artificial groins in the beach that when that stop the longshore current from actually dragging the sand beyond that area. And so you're going to get these carved bunches, but you don't get 
the um, erosion anymore. And another thing you can, you can also do to protect the uh, entrance of the of the water is do what something that's called break water or um, a bro a wall basically that protects the shoreline from erosion uh, because because of the uh, of this wall of uh, bricks that you added, and that way you can actually create harbor entrances and all the, all of that without necessarily damaging the shoreline and causing more erosion because of the jetty or the water that is going to be coming out of here. All right clearing sediments. And if anything, you're actually going to end up creating deposition here and increasing the amount of sand instead of actually getting the uh, current destroying the beach. And that's what we're doing now in South Beach, not to mention that we also mine sand from the bottom of the ocean to constantly drop in the South Beach to make sure the beach doesn't disappear because it's slowly and surely disappearing as it gets eroded and carried away by the longshore currents. Um, here's yet another vi video, uh, another image of this same process. And you see how the beach drift uh, alongside the, the squash and the backwash. Squash is when the when the uh, the, cur the breakers hit the beach and pick up the sand, and then the backwash is when it comes back from there. And you can see how the actually uh, the drifting of the longshore current ends up creating down the line a literal drift of the sand, which was then therefore going to create the, the the spit, which then might even create a bay, consequently in the bottom. So you see what happened here. The same thing. You get the spit. This is actually the, that thing that we call the inlet over here, a very small, narrow area of, of, of uh, opening. And then you have a large, large, large uh, bay, which is basically the closed up because of this spit. And here's yet another inlet from another view from this very same inlet. And so, and you also have a tombolo display here in the top left side like we talked about before. Now, how do you actually get that sand? Where does that sand come from? Now, in a previous chapter, we talked about the fact that sand comes from chemical and, and erosion and weathering of rock out in the ocean and in the beach itself. So we're going to talk about that soon. Sand also comes from meteor strikes, uh, meteor dust, off from ash. But the most important source of sand is river deposition. So river deltas carry a lot of, of water, debris, and all kinds of material from the uh, continents. And everything that actually eroded it and throw that into the river. And it's funny that it actually carves these paths into the, into the water as it erodes the shoreline and where it hits it. But then after it hits it, it spreads that sand and deposits it all over the place. Now one thing that's actually interesting is that uh, depending on the fineness of the material, it's actually carried further or less than, than the uh, um, other materials. So you end up getting a differential formation of, of, of sedimentation patterns because uh, the materials are carried more by the currents of the river and by the wave currents uh, because of this. And so you get this differential formation of, of the thing. And we talked about this a little bit when we did the bottom of the ocean. Now, notice that you, what you're going to end up getting is this bottom set bed, which is the area really far from the actual deposition. You're going to get the fore set bed, which is the actual beach side of the, of the or near side, where it's full of sand, which then might get eroded and collapse further into the bottom set over time. And then you get the bar sand, which is the formation of something we call the berm, which is actually what causes the beach. And this bar sand is basically the heavier sand, that, that has, stays behind, it's not dragged too far away. And then you have the top set bed, which is the material that's still being dragged into the open thing. Into the, and then these bars uh, might be picked up by longshore currents, taking something else, and so forth. And with time, you actually spread that around. And later, we're actually also going to talk about salt marshes, which are areas where the uh, rivers meet the ocean. So remember this slide because it's all important for this as well. Now, even though I'm not going to talk about it in detail, I wanted to point out that deltas can also be um, glacier deltas. Rivers of frozen rivers of water or, or, or glaciers do this very same thing that the river deltas do, except they do it slower and more powerfully than rivers can ever do. And the sediments don't deposit immediately near this, near this, but are dragged into the ocean as it melts away and gets dragged away, as you see here. All right, so this is also happening with the, with the glaciers. Now, let's look at some of those deltas that we're talking about, some of these greater uh, great deltas. Now, you see here the Ganges River, the river Delta is one of the largest deltas in the world. 
and you see look at how grayish this ocean water actually gets now this is actually all land up there okay and here is where you see the ocean or the Bay of Bengal where the ocean is actually being hit by the Delta right there this right here is a zoom in of that and you see how much sedimentation is being blasted into the water and you see how there's a differential formation of the sediments because some sediments are heavier than others uh, similarly in New Orleans you also have the formation of bars or forebeds of top beds sets and stuff like that so what we refer to the, on the other one or bar sand is the sand that forms immediately uh, surrounding the actual thing and then you have the top set bed which is right under that which creates the um, area of the delta and then you're going to have the finer four, four bed which is uh, beyond the river and then the bottom bed which is lighter materials thrown further away from it and you can see this patterns in the Mississippi River which also throws a vast amount of deposition material into the oceans um, and the other great rivers are the Nile River and you can see the ginormous Nile Delta over here and how it actually the original shoreline of Africa is at this right so there's actually the shorelines are really like that but you can see how the shoreline is actually extended because of the Delta of the of the of the um, Nile River and you can see how the Nile cuts through the shoreline trying to find the easiest path to the ocean and creating this very deep erosion pattern similarly you can see this uh, on the Amazon Delta uh, from a satellite image on on these three images on the left side and you can see the same thing the top bed the four bed and then the bottom bed stretching deeper and deeper into the ocean now the Amazon Delta has an interesting fact that I've actually been there and I remember when I took my expedition that I we actually drove uh, took the, the the boat 15 miles into the ocean well actually 15 kilometers it wasn't miles 15 kilometers into the ocean we were somewhere around here 15 kilometers into the ocean and we actually took a sample of the water out of the, out of the ocean it was fresh water it was not even brackish yet that means the water of the Amazon River has so much power it's depositing so much sediment so much fresh water that even 15 miles that's like even that's really deep into the continental shelf already water is still fresh it hasn't mingled properly and it's going to be very it's going to be actually something close to actually 50 miles until the water is completely salty uh, and, and you can see that all the way here but it's still blending and so it's going to be miles until the, the Amazon Delta truly mixes with the ocean so this river deposition is the source of the majority of the sand that actually causes the formation of the of the beaches a lot of this sand that's coming from the rivers gets distributed through, through currents such as longshore currents and other currents to, to form the shorelines of continents but other shorelines are also formed by wave erosion and so now we're going to talk about marine processes of forming the land uh, or the shoreline we'll see uh, now, and and so we're going to talk about the contrast between the erosional coastline, coastline of the waves creating these oceans and the, the position of coastline uh, that which we talked we started talking about which is coming from rivers which transfer these sediments to 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 create things like uh, the bay mouth bars the spits the barrier islands and lagoons and bays and things like that and so we'll talk about that um, oh tumbles don't forget tumbles as well but this is wave erosion this is more depositional coastline which comes from river materials or even from materials which were created by wave erosion but then dragged to other lo locations and so in the next few videos we're going to talk about the difference between these two all right see you then